afternoon, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to New Center Now. Everyone's talking about the weather. We're getting you prepared. We're going to have someone from the Coast Guard joining us live in studio to talk about how they're keeping people, if they choose to go out, on the water safe. All right, Chris Costa is going to have the story about what we talked about with Mima yesterday. Things you need to prepare for just in case you're out of power for a long time. And Tennyson Tries It is back for another edition, this time dock sledding. Oh boy, this is New Center Now. Whiteout conditions, fast falling snow, and very strong winds add up to a blizzard warning for parts of Maine tomorrow. Hello, everybody. I'm Lee Goldberg. And I'm Lindsay Mills. The Bombo Genesis, it's called that. It's a true thing. <laughs> That's the big story of the day. Yes. So let's head right to the Weather Center with Keith Carson. Hey, Keith. Hey, Bombo. guys. Yes, Bombo Genesis is a real thing. Bomb Cyclone that's on Twitter right now. Not really a real thing. Either way, it's going to be a lot of snow for us. And a blizzard warning has been hoisted in the red and a winter storm warning here in the uh, pinkish shade for the rest of the state. Remember, the difference between the blizzard and the winter storm has nothing to do with how much snow you're going to get. It has to do with visibility and wind speeds. All right, here's the beginning of our storm system starting to gain strength off the coast of South Carolina. Five inches of snow right now in Charleston, South Carolina. That does not happen very often, showing you some of the colder air that is wrapping in behind this storm and the intensification of it as it moves through. So it gets even stronger tonight, rapidly dropping pressure by tomorrow. It's snowing over Maine, and the heaviest is tomorrow afternoon through tomorrow night. Here's a quick look at your timeline. We'll do more of this later, but the snow starts in the morning over eastern and southeastern parts of the state. By 10 a.m., you can see it's all the way into Bangor. By the middle part of the day, the entire state is seeing snow, and it is throwing down snow along the coastline. Guys, we could have snowfall rates of two to three inches an hour, but the real story is going to be the winds. We'll talk about those in just a few minutes. All right, Keith, thank you. Now, the down east is going to bear the brunt of those heavy winds that Keith was just talking about, but the main emergency management agency wants people to be prepared just in case they lose electricity no matter where you live in our state. That's right. They say you need at least three days worth of supplies to take shelter in your home. Chris Costa shows us more. When there's snow in the forecast, even we can predict the lines at the grocery store are going to be long. However, the main emergency management agency says there are items you need besides food in case you lose power and plan on staying home. Let's go. First, you'll need a full tank of gas. Your car can act as a source of heat and electricity. Mima tells people to keep their cell phones and other electronics charged. These USB adapters that fit in the cigarette lighter usually work well. Mima says you should prepare to have three days worth of food for your entire family in case the power goes out. They encourage stocking up on non-perishable foods, like canned food, or bread and peanut butter, or prepackaged snacks, as well as bottles of water. Mima recommends a flashlight and extra batteries, or candles and matches. If you or your family members take medicine, make sure to have extra in case it's unsafe to drive or the pharmacy is closed. And at night, you'll want extra layers and blankets to ride out what Mother Nature brings. And Mima also encourages people to keep a first aid kit, cash, and important documents on hand, such as bank records or insurance policies. All right, so we got a question during Todd Gutner's Facebook Live this morning, and we're here to answer your questions. It's the whole point of our show, right? Absolutely. So Pam wants to say it's high time that warming centers become part of or become pet friendly. So Pam, uh, we know there are tons of pet owners out there just like you who want to keep their four-legged family members very warm. That's right. Kathleen Rusley says it depends on Rusley rather says it depends on the shelter and that it's best to call ahead though they do try to put that information out when they release the list. So if you have a question you'd like answered, just please send it to us at asknow at wcsh6.com or asknow at wlbz2.com or you can comment right now on our Facebook live stream. All right, sounds good. We're moving on now to other news of the day. Men's, Maine's legislature gaveled in the new year. A budget battle is brewing in the state with a heavy focus on funding, voter approved Medicare expansion as well. Funding that today was the first day of the new session, but hearings are canceled for tomorrow due to the weather. 
Lewiston High School students were told to stay home today as a safety precaution. Police say they charged a classmate with terrorizing after a member of the public found a threatening message on social media last night. Well, Tennyson had a really hard assignment this week. Yeah, I think this guy likes me. I think so I too. Much, much. Tennyson tries dog sledding <laughs> later on on now. And the storm's going to be pretty nasty on land, but the high seas will be much worse. A representative from the United States Coast Guard will have a very important safety message. That is coming up. If you have a boat in the water, preparing for tomorrow's weather is a must. Lobstermen who still go out this time of year to pull in traps are getting ready for the strong winds. Greg Griffin has been in the business 38 years. He says ice can cause major damage to boats left in the water year round. Greg says he hasn't been out on the water since Christmas Eve, so making sure his boat fire is up today is his main concern. I'm trying to start my engine for the first time since we got hit with this tremendous cold snap. I need to know that I can come down aboard the boat and start this engine on short notice during this storm in case someone needs help or if I need to move this boat. Griffin says his traps should be okay. They are out in deep enough water that they won't get battered around as they would in shallow water closer to home. All right, so the worst part of tomorrow's storm is going to be about 100, 125 miles off the coast. And that's not a place where people normally are, but a lot of commercial fishermen do spend their time out that way. The Coast Guard is hoping that is not going to be the case tomorrow. Commander James McClay joins us now to talk about just that. Thank you for the time. Of course. So obviously tomorrow, not a day where you'd love anybody out on the water, no matter what they do for work. Right. Coast Guard's tracking a pretty, as you know, a pretty significant storm moving up the coast. Offshore, we could have seas as big as 26 feet, 60 mile per hour winds. And then near shore coastal waters, we could have seas 16 feet and 40 mile per hour winds. So needless to say, a significant weather event when you include the uh, low visibility, the blizzard conditions, and then the possibility for some, some coastal flooding, uh, we're taking this storm very seriously. And so, we, we ask mariners to do the same. Sure, and I can just hear some of these guys and women now saying, I've been fishing for 20 years, mm -hmm. I've right. been through worse than this, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm going out regardless. I mean, how do you talk people out of it and, and really pound home that it's not safe to be out there? Right, well, there's, there's obvious risk with uh, operating in these conditions. Uh, given the weather that I just described and then as well as the water temperatures of about 33 degrees at least at the buoy that I checked here in Portland with those type of water temperatures survivability in the water um, you could be unconscious in 15 minutes and survivability could be as little as 30 minutes so given those conditions I'm not sure the risks are, are worth the gain of being out on the water next couple of days now when it's time to maybe go out there and respond to something what are the precautions or the safety measures you guys take to make sure your team stays safe Right, well we, we obviously train to operate in adverse conditions and we're trained and equipped to do so. Uh, but at the, at the peak of the storm, our capabilities to respond to rescue mariners may be limited or non-existent. So given that, um, again, we, we're cautioning mariners to make, make good judgments uh, with regard to being out in the water. And if you don't have to be out there, don't be out there. Now you guys, obviously, like you said, you train and you, and you plan for this, but do you add extra staff just in case? Like, is tomorrow going to be, will there be more people on duty just in case people don't adhere to your advice and they do go out there? Right. Of course, we, we take precautions and we have plans in place for severe weather. And uh, we're, in the, we're in the midst of uh, making those precautions and those um, preparations right now. Um, so, yes, we are, we are prepared and we, will have, we always have folks on duty and we will have folks on duty next couple of days to respond. All right, well, we appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. If you have any questions or uh, comments, then we're going to have uh, Kim Rinder McClay stay with us during the commercial break, and we'll answer those as well. So thank you Absolutely. much for the time. Absolutely. Thank you thank so you. much. Well, if your heat stops working or you lose power or water tomorrow, what is your landlord responsible for? Have you ever wondered that? What tenants need to know? Coming up on Now. And the snow is really going to mess with your commute tomorrow. Keith will break it down hour by hour. It's coming up next. It's time to giddy up another episode <laughs> of Tennyson Tries It. And this week, Tennyson embarks on an adventure that combines two things that many Mainers love, snow and dogs. Oh, the suspense waiting for that second <laughs> one. <laughs> Tennyson met with a family that competes in dog sledding races during the winter, and he decided to try it out for himself. Hey guys, it's Tennyson Coleman. This is Tennyson Tries It. We're in Shirley, Maine, and... 
who let the dogs out? I'm surrounded by about 40 Alaskan Huskies, and your boy is about to go dog sledding. One dog is company, but four dozen? Now that's a party. How many dogs are out here again? I think 46. Mark and Ashley Patterson live in Shirley, Maine. This is their big happy family, and yes, they know all of these Alaskan Huskies by name. You use a common theme for each litter of puppies. So this is Trident. He's out of our medieval weapons litter. We were over there talking to Bo. Um, that was a black dog. The couple competes in dog sledding competitions in Maine, including the Can-Am Crown in Fort Kent. The 250 mile race is the longest on the East Coast. This is our Iditarod of the East. The whole community, boy, they put a lot of work into getting that race to start. Ashley Patterson, now in her early 30s, has competed since she was 17, becoming one of the youngest female mushers to complete the race at age 18. The volunteers, make it all fun and they just want the mushers to finish. And gosh, you know, that's, that's gotta be the goal. Each dog has their own personality. I think this guy likes me. And the Pattersons say they love to race. Okay. This was great fun for the dogs. I decided to see what the hype is all about by going on a three mile run with Ashley Patterson and some of my new canine friends. To help the leaders. After harnessing the dogs and, and me getting set, which included wrapping myself up, Patterson prompts the dogs to start and we're off. Riding through the woods of Piscataquis County, one of the first things I notice is how in sync the dogs are. Each step in rhythm, feeding off of each other, listening to Patterson's commands, like this one. Meaning, speed up. Do or die, right? You just hang on. The ride bumpy at times, but overall it's smooth sailing. A unique way to take in Maine serenity, despite temperatures below zero. After the ride, it was lit. I thank the dogs for their hard work, praising them one by one. Then the Pattersons load up a few dogs into their truck. They're taking them a few miles down the road to train at a larger trail, preparing for the Eagle Lake sled dog races next week. And like always, their hope is to cross the finish line. Guys, I'm freezing my butt off right now, but it's okay because that was really fun. And as I always say, if I can try it, so can you. Oh my gosh. That sounds so fun. Tennyson, I want to know, how can we try it? You said we're able to try it too, right? Oh yeah, so uh, both Ashley and Mark own a company called Lone Wolf Guiding Services up in Shirley. That's where we were. And they take you on rides like, uh, like I took, or they can teach you to mush your own sled. And let me just tell you, I know it's called Tennyson Tries It, but I don't know if I have enough insurance. Uh, to go messing up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> how cold was it? Like you said it was cold, but did you ever look like how cold it, was, it actually was? Yeah. It was negative five, I wow. believe. Oh, that's um, not even cold. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, well, not that's what, that's what Mark days. Patterson. <laughs> oh that's my what God. Mark said to me. He yeah. said it's not it's not cold enough. I mean, it's that's not, he said maybe negative twenty. Yeah. That would be cold. Negative five, it's nothing. But All right, Tennyson. Well done. Know. Well done, sir. <laughs> I have a husky. One of my dogs is a husky. Really? And she will not come in when it gets, like, super cold. I love it. It won't happen. They love I mean, it. My she dog loves it had, out there? Yeah. yeah. And you have a puppy. I do. Well... Yeah. He's got three legs. Yeah, so he can't well, do the three-leg thing yeah. that all the other dogs he, do he, when it's cold. It would be a challenging yeah. process to be <laughs> a dog two, sled dog. Two legs is pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, my dog's not into it. He's 12 pounds as well. Right. Uh, we got a storm coming, as you may have heard. What? I don't know. Did you hear what? anything about this? Wait a second. You know what's no. crazy? We started talking about this last Thursday. And if we're off by an inch and a half, people will be mad. If you really think about it, it's crazy how, how good weather forecasting is really how far it's come that we can talk about this seven days in advance and here it comes for tomorrow blizzard warnings in effect in the shaded red area and the pink area here is a winter storm warning here's our storm starting to develop off the coast of the carolinas brought snow into savannah georgia tallahassee florida and four or five inches in charleston south carolina showing you that it already has some teeth to it as it moves towards us it really though strengthens overnight tonight and it does undergo bombogenesis which is dropping 24 millibars in 24 hours or less. It does that easily, and it's very strong by tomorrow morning, sitting off our coastline by tomorrow afternoon, and then 
due east by tomorrow night. The worst of this, though, will be in the afternoon and early evening. Let's take a look at the timing for you. I'd say it's moved up about an hour to an hour and a half from what we may have talked about yesterday. So that's noteworthy because I think the snow starts in the morning along the coastline. By 11 o'clock, you can see the snow is spread into most of the state, heaviest along the coast, and then it is just throwing down snow here. Two, three, four, five o'clock snowfall rates two to three inches an hour, almost no visibility here along the coastline, particularly some of the heavy snow tries to rotate into northern Maine by late afternoon and early evening. And then we wrap this thing out pretty quickly from southwest to northeast with the dry slot clearing us out. The last to say goodbye to the storm will be down east to northern Maine. They'll do so around two in the morning on Friday. Luckily, we haven't had to make any major changes here to snowfall uh, amounts, six to 12 inches, 12 to 16 over down east into the mid coast as well. The only thing I'd say if we could do it all over again, I might start the bidding more like seven or eight. I don't see many of us getting six, but it wasn't enough of a change to, to make any real changes to the map. I think this will do a pretty good job for us tomorrow. But the winds are the bigger concern and the wind speeds will be strongest from the mid coast into down east Maine. 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts will cause some power outages there. We should be in the 40 to 50 mile per hour range along the coastline in southern coastal Maine. 30 to 40 miles an hour in the uh, mountains and into the foothills. Of course power outages are very essential. The difference between us being at 62, 63 miles an hour on a gust and 68, 69 miles an hour I think given the soil conditions now will be the difference between some power outages and a lot of power outages. So we don't have much leeway there. Down east is the worst spot for it. And we talked about this a little bit yesterday and I still think it's a good idea. If you're in an exposed area along the coastline, it wouldn't kill you tomorrow morning to get your heat above average. You know, uh, so Every, every dad out there is just cringing at the idea of, of cranking the thermostat. But mm -hmm. I think it's a good move tomorrow morning. If you start at 75 or even warmer, mm. what's the worst thing that happens? You don't run your heat for the next day, but if you lose power, now you have more time before you, you burst pipes and all that. That's some good advice. I know, it kills Lee as a dad. He's like, don't right. touch that thermostat. <laughs> I'm starting to get a rash. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can throw in extra layers too, right? right That's yeah. always the get advice. Get a blanket. <laughs> All right. Well, tenants at a mobile home park in Brunswick are fed up after their landlord turned down their water pressure because of increased usage. Yeah, the company Bay Bridge Estates says that the water usage spiked because of tenants running their faucets to avoid having frozen pipes. Now, as a result of that, the company turned down or shut off pressure so that two wells don't run dry. Christina Rex is following the story and has the latest developments on that. Yeah, Lee and Lindsay, the town attorney actually has now sent a letter to the landlord to demand a solution within the next 24 hours. Bay Bridge Estates already had a plan to expedite installing a third well to provide more water. The town's health officer says he and the CDC consider this a significant health issue. The letter written by the town attorney demands that both a short term and long term solution be submitted to the town by noon tomorrow. If Baybridge Estates can't come up with a solution, the town says it'll take action. To summarize, the letter says the town will give tenants access to water, but the company will have to pay those costs back. The attorney says they don't want to have to take this step, but they are committed if the company doesn't have a clear plan by noon tomorrow. Now, the extreme cold we're experiencing can lead to several problems in homes, frozen pipes, broken furnaces, etc. So if something like this happens to you, what can you as a tenant do to protect yourself and get those problems fixed? Step one should be obvious. Talk to your landlord. Tenants have rights under the Covenant of Habitability statute in Maine state law. If you can't work it out with your landlord, that's when attorney Tom Kelly says it might be time to get a lawyer involved. There are two options if you can't find an agreement with your landlord. First, they could uh, try to uh, take action by withholding rent, although that's risky. He says oftentimes landlords will evict a tenant for withholding rent, but that this could get you into court with your landlord to get problems worked out. Most of the time it's going to get settled. Kelly says it's less common for tenants to take the action of filing a lawsuit, but that the typical step is to hire an attorney to negotiate with your landlord on your behalf. Suing, he says, is a last resort. 
Kelly, Kelly also says rights differ for those in mobile homes versus those in apartment buildings. Typically, mobile homeowners have more responsibility for what actually happens inside that home versus those in apartments who obviously are able to, you know, contact their landlords and their landlord works everything out. Well, and frustration clearly on both sides mm, because they right. both feel like they're right. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to the end of this challenge. All right. All right. Very Thank you. Thanks. Christina, thanks so much. Today, President Trump granted federal dollars to Maine's public lands and municipalities to help rebuild after the October windstorm. Thousands were without power for several days, and Maine's utility companies had a daunting task ahead of them. But Central Maine Power Company's president at the time, Sarah Burns, says that she learned a thing or two about positivity from the ice storm of 98. But it was a real lesson in you have to stand up, you have to take ownership, you have to be the energy and optimism, you have to be the solution, and you have to say, hey guys, we're on it, we're going to get it done. Well, it started with the ice storm and ended with the wind storm. Tomorrow on Now, CMP's recently retired president takes a look back at her career and what she learned during Maine's most challenging moments. And then tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, watch Frozen in Time, a new Center Maine special about the 20th anniversary of the ice storm of 98. And Rob Caldwell will bring us new Center at 530 in just a few minutes. He's here now to tell us some of the stories we can look forward to. Rob? Haley and Lindsay, another day with below normal temperatures and all across Maine, people are trying to get their oil tanks filled up. The problem is that companies are having a hard time keeping up with the demand. You'll see how they're coping. And this was not the first baby born in Maine in 2018, but his New Year's birth is certainly one that his parents will remember. We'll tell you why. Those stories and more straight ahead on New Center at 530. All right, Rob, thank you very much. New Center Now continues after the break. All right, so today's brain drop's a little bit different. It's actually a letter that was sent to the editor at the Portland Press uh, Herald about basically saying, we don't think people should have to stand outside in these storms. It's unnecessary. Uh, they, they point out they think that it might be dangerous. Um, and they're basically asking managers and newsrooms and whatnot not to force them to, to do this. And of course, it's a picture of me being an idiot <laughs> on the left there. Um, you know, it struck me is that we want to be outside. Most weather nerds want to be outside. So I volunteer. I, nobody told me say it for tomorrow. I said, hey, guess where I'm going tomorrow? Um, but there are situations where I don't think it's very safe. I think putting reporters out in hurricanes or in tornadoes shouldn't happen. I think you should be well versed in the weather to do that. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think there's some value to it. Right. I, th I think it depends. I think if you're doing it for the for the wow factor to show that you're standing there, then it sure. becomes more about you than about providing information I can't get without you there. Mm -hmm. yep. But if you need to be there to help to accurately describe and tell us what's going on, right. then absolutely. And there's some yeah. entertainment, right? And right. I think, you sure. Know, to, as long as it's safe. Like as long as you're safe. When we're on the blizzard tomorrow, it will be entertaining to see me knock sideways. I'll be okay. <laughs> right. Uh, so I think what you have to realize is a lot of weather people want to go outside. Now, I can't speak to reporters. They don't always want to be standing outside. <laughs> but I know most of the people in the weather office do. They want right. to be there. You want to be out there seeing as it's well, playing Well, and out. I want you there and not me. So I know. So tomorrow. <laughs> so look, Perfect. Yeah. There you go. All right. New Center 530 starts right now.